What's up everyone, that annoying American one here with a bit of an unscripted video today as I go over the results of the alternative nation contest we held over on the discord. Now, this contest was for a $10 gift card and the winner will be receiving that prize. However, to me, this contest was so much fun to watch this community, though small, come together and submit just amazing submissions, all for the love of alternative history. So. If you want to join this community as it slowly grows, hop over to the Discord and we'll be happy to have you. So let's get into it. Today I'm going to be going over my top three picks from the Discord. First off, we have a bit of a smaller one from active user Shiverthorn. The Turkish state. Ataturk dies in service during World War I and is therefore not able to lead the Turks in the Turkish War of Independence. Anatolia is split up. Italy is no longer an Axis power, however the remnant Turkish nation in the north would go on to become one. When World War II breaks out between the Allies and Germany, Turkey immediately attacks the French in the border through Anatolia, and is overall a better and more strategic ally for the Germans. They capture the Suez Canal and eventually drive Italy out of Anatolia and North Africa. The Turks manage to assist the Germans in conquering the Caucasus, in a sense saving much of the German army. However, the Axis are not able to fully conquer Russia as there is just too much land. The Axis split up the land just like this. Mainland Italy is a German puppet state. Thank you Shiverthorn and let's move on. Next up, we have my favorite submission conceptually, however, for reasons I'll talk about later it just barely didn't win, but still, user cringerat on discord, thank you for this amazing submission and let's get right into it. The submission itself is in two parts, so we're going to start by talking about the Mexica Empire. That's right, the Mexica Empire. The Aztecs were able to successfully fend off the Spanish invasion of their homeland. Revitalizing the empire with the adoption of European technologies through stolen blueprints from the conquistadors. Smallpox still ravages the nation, but through much needed reforms to the empire, including the abolition of human sacrifices to appease European traders, Mexico is able to recover. After several centuries of expansion, Mexico needed a key ally to fend off constant Spanish incursion, leading to their support of the American Revolution. Today, Mexico is a constitutional monarchy, adopting similar social democratic policies as their northern neighbor. We'll get to that. They are a key ally to the USA and have fought in almost every war together as best buddies, defending democracy together in arms. The bald eagle and the golden eagle stand strong. Next, we'll talk about the US in this timeline. The United States is able to obtain even greater power thanks to their key support from the Mexica Empire, the Iroquois siding with the revolutionaries, and the Quebecois insurgencies in British North America. Not only did the Americans capture Canada, but with their aid from the Aztecs and Iroquois, public perception of indigenous nations shift to become much more positive. Since the Treaty of Paris, Quebec was admitted into the Union as the 15th state, inspiring the addition of freedom of language in the First Amendment. In addition, tribal nations are granted a special statehood known as tribal nations, or Indian country as nicknamed by the Yanks, where ancestral lands are completely controlled by tribal governments with federal trade protections, even having tribal seats in the whole of Congress. Slavery is abolished earlier and the Civil War is shorter lived, succeeding in reconstruction and assuring rights for all Americans. The US and Mexico join forces to declare war on Spain, ridding the North American continent from Spanish control completely. Today, the United States is a socialist democracy, as exiled immigrants from the European empires introduced it to the country over time, as more efficient use of land by settlers, natural conservation in tribal nations, and more effective unionization of workers leads to a snowball of two terms for Teddy making a greater New Deal, and full embrace of democracy as the mo at the most direct form possible. That's it for this submission. Again, absolutely amazing. Thank you, Cringerat, for it. I loved reading it, and I hope everyone at home did too. Before I go over the winner, here's one honorable mention. This map was drawn by Buttersticks on Discord. They drew it completely at home on a piece of paper during school, so I just thought that was really cool. So here it is. Now, let's get to the winner. This is the Alternative History of Pakistan by a Discord user, Blue Whale. Now, this submission won due to its sheer amount of effort put into it. I'm not going to be able to read the whole thing, however, just know this was a long one. So let's get into it. Modern Pakistan, as I'm sure you are familiar with, is separated by a national line with India, formed by the British after the British Raj disbanded. This is the perfect way to start a new nation, because it could have been switched in time by the flip of a coin. In the British partition, they split the area more evenly, giving Pakistan more land, although not relative to the population. So the map, illustrated in 1947, looks as follows. 
As you can see, this doesn't cut off Bombay, but it does cut off what would be India's capital of New Delhi. In addition, this map, Pakistan, will keep East Pakistan, which we will get into later. Also, as you can see, they have the Kashmir under their control. India, fearing repercussions, holds back their aggressions. Although Jawaharlal Nuru was infuriated, even after King George gave him sole power saying he didn't want to have to be responsible for him. Eventually, in 1954, instead of trying to obtain Kashmir, they declared New Delhi as theirs, which doesn't sit well with Pakistan. Pakistan does nothing but back up troops just across the mountain in case of an attack. Now, what story isn't good without one assassination? One man, an Indian native, upset with Pakistan not giving New Delhi back, although they do hold the right to maintain it, plots to kill their Prime Minister, Muhammad Ali Bagra, and succeeds in doing so. Pakistan then inf initiates their armed military, attacking rural India, but holds back on Bombay for a while. After a year of small advancements, the map turns out to look like this. War crimes ensue, and Hinduism is almost completely eradicated from Bombay. Fast forward to the 21st century and Pakistan is on its way to becoming the new Singapore, with some of the most modern and collected cities in the world. Following a decision by the government to remove religion from politics, relations between India and Pakistan have improved greatly, with Pakistan becoming more and more progressive by the day. They are now the leader and founder of the RURD, Renewable Energy Resource Development where they help other countries become sustainable on renewable energy after themselves becoming one of the most sustainable on it, even with their petroleum and other oil rigs. Pakistan is able to afford this expensive project due to the money in the oil industry, which is kind of the industry they are trying to avoid relying on. They are so far ahead that they are on the road to zero net carbon by 2025. Thanks to all the technology they have developed, they have been working hard to improve relations with other countries that might have had a different opinion on them in the 20th century. Their current flag looks as follows. And with that, it leaves the rest of it for you to imagine how the new and improved state of Pakistan will fare. After all, it seems an entire nation's fate can be decided by just the drawing of a line.